On the um, 12th of January, the first night of inundation to Brisbane, we were actually working in this area just two streets up at St Lucia here. Water wasn't raging as such, it was inundation through the stormwater pipes. Um, the depth was considerate. Um, as we were going along the street, we came to a roundabout. We looked down and we saw a light from a shape that we couldn't, couldn't pick in the dark. We went down to it to investigate what it was and it ended up being a submerged car, a full sedan with two people in it. There's about four inches of air left and the light was the gentleman on the phone to triple zero at the time, ringing for a bit of help. So he's left his apartment straight onto a normal road thinking he could drive out. He's turned the corner, all the power's out in the suburb, flood waters, it's just black, you can't see it, it looks the same as bitumen. Hit the water, as soon as he's hit the water, the car's floated, gone into deeper water and then sunk down and just locked in the car. We had a lot of trouble trying to get him out of the vehicle. Basically, all the electrics had frozen in the vehicle. Pressurisation, we couldn't bust the windows. We were trying to hit it with mag lights and oars. Once we started moving it, we were able to remove the water level in the vehicle dropped, obviously giving them some oxygen, and eventually the doors popped and we were able to get them out. So it was a pretty special moment, a little 11-year-old girl and I think it was a 38-year-old gentleman. Very grateful, very lucky. Hi, Gary Youngberry here. It is chilling to hear those untold stories of brave men like Paul and his colleagues. It just highlights one reason why this program is so important. It is a program that will not only look at how our beautiful and vibrant city has bounced back so quickly from one of its worst ever natural disasters, but also look at what's being done to make sure we are well prepared to minimise the impact of an inevitable repeat. Our subtropical climate and our wonderful river with its huge catchment is both one of our best assets and worst enemies. It, like nature, can never be tamed. But we can, with the right planning, at least blunt its teeth. It's the same preparation for storm damage, tying down those loose items in the yard, the plastic garden chairs that can be blown away by strong wind, it also floats. So when there's water, that becomes a hazard for us that are trying to navigate the streets. Um, the biggest hazard we had on that night was garbage bins and rubbish bags. All the loose bags came out. The ones that weren't tied together just became a long shopping bag and they were wrapping around the prop of our motor. Simple things like that, keeping your rubbish tied up inside the bin. All the loose items in your yard, keeping them away when there's storms coming. Cleaning your gutters, downpipes ensuring that water can get away if you do get it at your house. And definitely listen to the warnings. Stay with us now as we take a good look at the lessons learned and what we've done. How we've climbed back and how to prepare for when the rains come again. We will also be tackling some thorny issues and get good advice on what to do if you live in an area which may flood and how to best protect your financial interest through the sometimes complex area of insurance. While day by day the signs of the 2011 floods fade from the city and suburbs, every now and then you may still glimpse a reminder. Some people are still feeling the pain and will for years to come. Rebuilding, as we always say, does not end when people walk back into homes or businesses. That is when the process begins and that process is not a sprint, it's a marathon. The independent report by retired Major General Peter Arneson has given high praise to the way the disaster was handled in our capital city. However, he has delivered some strong recommendations for change. Nevertheless, the response was due in no small part to timely warnings from council in the later part of 2010. 
The then Lord Mayor Campbell Newman sniffed the win, took expert advice, cancelled holidays and made it clear he and his people knew something nasty this way was coming. The Lord Mayor was at the old Milton Tender Centre today confirming it'll become a massive parkland, including significant flood mitigation works. Local residents know it's needed. So seven times in the last 20 years, a metre of water through neighbouring properties. Easily, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe higher at the sort of the high point of it. The Lord Mayor worries worse is on the way. A 74-style swamping, very possible. In fact, I'm probably uh, more concerned than ever. Can do, doing everything he can to urge people to check flood maps and prepare. Because I don't want to see people uh, with the sort of hardship of that 74 situation uh, again. Uh, I think a lot of people would be buying properties unaware that they are in an area that has a history of flooding. The real risk is to people who've moved into our community in the last 15 years. The Lord Mayor says he won't be leaving the South East this summer, not until the danger's over. Everything we've seen. Uh, you know, indicates that there will be flooding. Is that why you're not going away, because of those concerns? Yes. On a day like this, it's hard to believe anyone could be worried about flooding. But the Lord Mayor says there is one thing he doesn't want to hear. It will break my heart if somebody in January or February this year is interviewed by one of you good people and they're telling the story how they don't have flood insurance. Prophetic words. Nonetheless, now is the time to look forward and prepare for that time when the rains traditionally come again. Now, the report made very clear and strong recommendations which are now in the process of being implemented. Lord Mayor Graham Quirk has taken the rains at a very difficult time and how's the can-do plan since January? Well, look, we're coming along very, very well in terms of recovery. Um, we thought we'd be at around 50% of parks fully open by the end of June. We were at 90%. Um, so that, together with a whole range of areas of recovery, are going extremely well. What lessons have been learnt from the flood, and in particular the report from Major General Arneson? Well, there's a number of things, uh, and we have got an action plan in place, and I've got a clear timeline for delivery against each of those recommendations. So we will have completed 90% of them by December this year. Others will take longer simply because of the quantum of work involved. Well, it was only three years ago when those gap storms hit, but to see the severity and what damage thunderstorms can actually do as well. Well, of course, we don't know what type of event we'll have. And so as a city council, we're getting prepared on every front. And it's a case of be prepared, safety first. That's the message I'd give out to householders and become a part of the early warning system that council has. And uh, there's 42,000 people currently registered for that service. But that allows people to receive an SMS or a phone call or an email uh, warning them that an event is on its way. Uh, it's a free service, it takes a couple of minutes to register either online or at Council's contact centre and I really recommend people do it. So the best thing really to prepare for is an active wet season? Well look, we're certainly conscious of, uh, of a wet season ahead, um, we're prepared for it. So one thing we can never predict is the nature or the size of the event. We can never give a guarantee, we are a, a city that's built on a river, uh, but we can only be as prepared as we possibly can be. To that end, while the city streets are clean and while rebuilds continue, it's under the streets and the parks that a massive task is underway. A task which makes sure when the water comes again, as it will, it has somewhere to go and not into your home or business. To do that, you may see massive machines working right around the city. One lady reported them for dumping toxic waste, but what they are doing is anything but toxic. As a bloke, we have given the somewhat unglamorous title of Mr Drains. Supervac's boss, Chris King, explains. There's plenty of material still left in the pipes and the culverts uh, in around Belimba, especially, or Morningside areas where we're working. Um, there's silt and sand and debris, driftwood, the odd eel. Um, so there's plenty of debris still left in the area to uh, be cleaned out. Well, basically, as you can see behind me, we use a high-velocity vacuum loader to remove that product. With these two particular lines that we're working on today, uh, I estimate uh, we'd be probably pulling out around about 100 tonne to 150 tonne. 
Just do as much as you can. You've got that gurney, so you can always solidify it. Yeah, there's no... If it's uh, not cleaned out now, I'll, I'll probably find that uh, it'll be the same thing happen again. If it floods, uh, you'll be back to uh, where you were at the beginning of the year. So being prepared is the, is the big thing at the moment. So, uh, and uh, if we're prepared, then uh, we won't have the uh, devastation like we had uh, this year, early this year. It's dirty work, but uh, this is what we do. So uh, serving the people of Brisbane, really. Good luck to them. With kilometres of dark, dirty and sometimes dangerous work to go, it is a race against time. And they can have coming face to face with those eels. Still to come, we look at our magnificent Riverside Playgrounds recovery. Get down and dirty again with the best expert advice on the thorny issue of insurance. Why so many people feel cheated and why insurance companies say it's not all their fault. Most people think that they'll never need their insurance policy. It's just a cost, it's a pain in the neck, where in fact it's one of the most valuable, important contracts they ever end into. What the weather experts are saying about the wet season to come, and for the business community, how are your property values holding up as Brisbane still shines? There is no doubt the state and its capital city is back at work full speed. Visitors are here. The flood scars fade day by day. Although sometimes you get a reminder when you see the occasional, sadly, still hard hit business or home. In the days and months that have passed, painted as the great Satans have been the insurance companies and in some cases, there is no doubt that this damning criticism has been fair. However, when you stand back and take a cold, hard look, who is to blame? Well, one of the nation's foremost insurance experts and author of the book, It May Never Happen To Me, Dr Alan Manning paints a different picture and has some very good advice for us all as the next wet season approaches. There's a whole pile of social ramifications here as well as the monetary losses. People's lives are completely turned upside down when they suddenly realise that this insurance contract is so very important and yet they've taken so little time and treated it just as a cost. The question of flood in most policies out there appears in the first few pages. It's not buried back at the end of the document, it's buried up the front, often in bold or italics so that you can pick up something like flood as to whether or not you're insured. But you do have to take a few minutes to, to go through it. And if you're not sure, there are experts out there called insurance brokers, and their job is, like any trusted advisor, to get you the right advice, because they've got a lifetime's knowledge and understanding of this complex area, and can give you the right advice as to what you need, what your risks are, and then make sure the policy that you buy matches your needs so that you're fully protected. It's a big thing to buy your home and to furnish it beautifully then why wouldn't you take a few minutes just to get make sure that you are adequately protected? If clouds have a silver lining, then let's look at the picture for Brisbane's commercial property market as well as our residential market, which is still strong. On the commercial scene, Ali McDade, Senior Research Analyst of Landmark Wide Brisbane, explains. I guess at this stage there's been limited um, activity to accurately gauge value impacts on um, commercial property. The flooding was really restricted to areas like Rockley, Milton, Rosalie, um, West End and parts of the CBD. And traditionally these areas are quite tightly held. In saying that though, I think the market has been reminded of the risks associated with flood prone commercial property. And we're sort of anticipating in the short to medium term future, um, a cautious attitude will prevail. Industry discussions are really focusing around the relocation of critical services such as power and communications to above the flood level and hopefully in the potential of future flooding this will limit the um, downtime. The key here is proper due diligence. It's important for people to be aware of history of flooding in the area and particular flood levels for the individual property that they'll be looking at. Look, I think the physical growth and the investment that we've seen in the uh, flood prone areas 
since 1974 really supports the notion that people either accept or forget the flooding risk. Unless there are key changes to any of the planning or regulatory environment, the market fundamentals will remain the same and these areas are generally inner city, near city, near city localities and uh, near key transport infrastructure so they will retain their demand. There are some really great online tools. The Brisbane City Council's flood flag map identifies overland flow paths and history of particular flood levels for individual properties. So one of the next questions raised by the Arneson report is, can we ever floodproof Brisbane? The answer is simply no. Surprised? You should not be. Listen to what Professor Michael Kenniger from the University of Queensland has to say on the subject. We were over complacent about the protection offered by the Wyvernho. We now know that we can't rely on that alone and that we have to be more thoughtful. We're also on a particular part of the river where the river is starting to spread out across its floodplain. And the reality about Brisbane is it's built, uh, a large parts of it are built on the floodplain. And I think one of the big lessons that we've all learned right across the city and certainly at this university is that uh, we have to be much more alert to the potential risks. We have to be thoughtful about uh, separate bits of the city and work to defend them properly. We have to almost develop ways of building and defensive techniques that protect the key assets, such as power and infrastructure and so on. But the principal lesson is that we cannot sit on our backside and just watch things go by. We have to prepare. It could happen again next year. They talk about one in a hundred year events, but we actually have to be alert to the fact that such a crisis could occur at any point in the climate cycle. So what about our magnificent parklands? Many of them are on the riverside and copped a real belting. Nature is as nature does, destroying and now fighting back with a little help from her friends. As many communities have found out, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. We've lived in this area for, for many years and uh, you do visit the parks on a fairly regular basis without almost thinking about it, whether you're taking the dog for a walk or taking the kids to a playground or just going for a walk yourself. And you know, we've got a good range of parks along the river and it's really brought it home to us now that uh, all of a sudden those parks aren't either you know, habitable or uh, they're just, they don't provide the same amenity that they, they did 12 months ago. And I think it'll take us a little while to sort of get used to that and, yeah, hopefully not take them for granted as much in the future. After this, we look ahead to the wet months to come. No one can be an absolute expert, but let's find out the best scientific advice on what the wet season of 2011-2012 may bring. Dr Roger Stone is one of the nation's foremost meteorologists. He's worked for the Department of Primary Industries, the CSIRO, the University of Southern Queensland and the United Nations. He says we need to approach the coming wet season with an air of sensible caution and be well prepared. So Roger, what can the people of Brisbane expect this wet season? I think we should be prepared for the possibility of another fairly intense wet season, at least average to above average. Remember, even an average wet season in Queensland and Brisbane can still pack a mighty punch. Could it be as bad as last? Is that possible? It is possible. I think possibility rather than probability at the moment. Roger, is it true the most, the recent flooding rain over January, it's linked to or the result of one of the strongest La Nina patterns we've, we've experienced? Absolutely. It was certainly, uh, as La Nina's go, one of the most intense we've ever had. I know we had similar patterns in the mid-50s. Some, some of the people out there might remember the 1955-56 La Nina events, big floods or in lots of Queensland on those years, 73, 74, of course, and 88, 89. So we've had them before. And in fact, back in 1893, it was a very intense La Nina. So in a sense, this was a classic pattern that we've had and we've experienced sometimes before. 
Well, the La Nina means above average rainfall that we got leading into the start of the wet season, but then also added to that was cyclonic activity. That's right. Are we expecting above average uh, for the development of cyclones this wet season? Yeah, I think we need to wait another couple of months before we speak too loudly about tropical cyclones. Uh, there's a lot attached to that information, so let's wait to see how intense or otherwise this La Nina pattern out there in the Pacific Ocean, and most La Ninas increase the number of tropical cyclones in the Coral Sea. So our models are indicating we could be heading back into uh, a wet season? Certainly some of the models are. Some of the better models, I'd have to say, from around the world are suggesting that. The key thing is not all models are showing that at the moment. So what do you do with that information? But certainly if you're in a risk-averse situation, I think it's worth factoring that in for the potential for a fairly intense wet season. So educate yourself now and start preparing for a wet season. Start preparing for it. So it'll be either wet or very wet, I would suggest. So at least that's worth preparing for. Um, some years like this aren't necessarily always as bad. So if we do get a wet season as bad as the last, how do you think we'll cope? Oh, I think we're somewhat more prepared. Uh, you'd have to say that. Let's hope we are. And, um, and at least start to factor that in, even now. What would you do differently if, if, if we know as we get closer towards summer? So update the information, that's the first thing to do. And then start thinking about what you do differently. Do you uh, plan your insurance differently? Do you clean your gutters? Do you change where you're going to park your car? Start thinking a bit ahead. Plan your summer holidays, perhaps, with a, with a, with a risk management approach in mind. So, Roger, the most important question is, uh, I could be called back from holidays again early this year. <laughs> That's a high probability. It's not certain, but it's a high probability. There you have it. The recent floods will always be etched in our minds forever, but will only go down as history for our future generations. While we can't accurately predict what Mother Nature will dish out, I can assure you that Queenslanders will weather the weather together. Good night. <laughs>